Aloha. Have you ever driven on a street here in Hawaii and wondered where did the name of that street come from? Well, that's why every Thursday, or as we say in Hawaiian, po aha, we have our Aloha Authentic segment, which helps to answer that question and share the mo'olelo behind the given names. For the month of October, or as we say in Hawaiian, Oka Kopa, we are highlighting streets that carry the names of our past royals. This week, we're visiting a very busy roadway known as Kapi'olani Boulevard. In the Ahupua'a of Manoa, in the Moku of Kona here on Oahu, lies a street that captures the name of the wife to Hawaii's last male monarch, her name being Julia Kapi'olani, and the street being Kapi'olani Boulevard. Julia Kapi'olani was born to father High Chief Kuhio Kalaniana Ole of Hilo and High Chiefess Kinoiki Kekaulike of Kauai, the daughter of Kauai's last king before their inclusion into the Kingdom of Hawaii. After her first marriage to High Chief Bennett Nam Namakeha, Kapi'olani remarried to David Kalakaua, who became king to the Hawaiian Kingdom in 1874, giving her the title Queen Consort. Queen Kapi'olani had contributed a lot to the Hawaiian community, and she is mostly known for her care to others. She was the caretaker to Prince Albert, the son of King Kamehameha IV and Queen Emma, and even established the Kapi'olani Maternity Home, where Hawaiian mothers and their newborn babies could receive care. However, today, we know this as Kapi'olani Medical Center for Women and Children. Did you know? Now you do. Very cool. Thanks, Kamaka. Yes, ma'am. All right, so you said she was given the title of Queen Consort. Yes. What is that? What's the difference between a queen and a queen consort? So a queen is a queen who holds the sovereign power of the monarchy fully. That was resided with Kalakaua, so he held that title of king. Queen Consort is really just a wife to the king who holds the sovereign power. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. Now, the Kapi'olani Boulevard is named after the Queen. Yeah. Is Kapi'olani Park as well? Yes, and that's actually one that was dedicated to her during her lifetime. Um, that was given or dedicated to her by her husband, King of the Time, King Kalakaua. Okay, and you mentioned Queen Kapi'olani taking care of uh, Queen Emma and King Kalakaua IV's uh, mm -hmm. son. Did, did, were they all kind of friends? Were all of the elite hanging out together? So they were. So in that sense was uh, Queen Emma and Kamehameha IV and their son, who only lived to a short age, um, but Prince Albert. Now, a lot of the elite, they knew of each other, but they weren't necessarily in best relationships with each other. Mm -hmm. Now, in this particular scenario, they, uh, Queen Emma and Queen Kapi'olani were friends. When Prince Albert had passed away, a lot of... Um, it was really under the care of Queen Kapi'olani during her time. And because of that, Queen Emma, the mother to Prince Albert, kind of started to become uh, not so friendly with Queen Kapi'olani. So from that point on, they were in troubled times. Mm -hmm. However, reading some stories, it, it, some stories share that at a certain point, Queen Emma kind of moved on and included Queen Kapi'olani mm -hmm. into their friendship again. Um, but there definitely was rivalry between some of the throughout history. Well, understandable, especially yeah. with a situation like that. Yeah. Oh, so very neat. Okay, well, cool. Thanks for breaking that down and giving us that info. Yes, ma'am. Um, and you have a second segment coming we up, I hear. We do have a second segment continuing on that, and we're definitely going to divulge more into Queen Kapi'olani and um, who she is and what she's about. We're going to be visiting uh, the, the Bishop Museum, so we'll be sure, make sure um, you... You stay tuned as we'll be heading to Bishop Museum to delve into more of this information of one of our royals, Queen Kopi Olani. So stay tuned. Take two returns. Perfect. Be right back. For the month of October, our Aloha Authentic segment is focusing on streets that carry names of our past Hawaiian royalty. This week, we are highlighting Kopi Olani Boulevard. The popularly used road is named after the wife of Hawaii's last king, her name being Julia Kapiolani. Kamaka Pili spoke with our friends at the Bishop Museum to delve more into the Queen's history. Yes, good morning. We are here at Bishop Museum. Now, we've been doing Aloha Authentic for almost a year. It's real cool that we can start to expand and talk story with other experts and, of course, our friends here at Bishop Museum who can give us even more insight to the stories behind these street names. So again, this uh, week we're focusing on Kapi'olani Boulevard, which brings attention to Queen Kapi'olani, the wife consort, or the wife and the queen consort to King Kalakaua, who was our last male monarch here in Hawaii. So we're here with DeSoto Brown, who's a um, historian here at Bishop Museum. Good morning. 
Good thank morning. you very much Good for morning. coming and talking well, story with thank us. Thank you for coming here to me. Oh, I mean, I get chicken skin already just thinking <laughs> about our conversation. But with such a little bit of time, can you just give us some history behind Queen Kapi'olani and what contribution she gave to us? Well, Queen Kapi'olani is commemorated here in Honolulu by two major features. The first is Kapi'olani Park, mm -hmm. and that, of course, was created by her husband, King Kalakaua, during her lifetime in the 19th century. She died in 1899. But we also are all familiar with Kapi'olani Boulevard, and that was created 30 years after her death, so she never saw that. Mm -hmm. They built that from starting in 1929 up into the 1930s, and of course, as with many things that have changed, uh, the Kapiolani Boulevard that was created initially is nothing like what we see today. Now, Queen Kapiolani, the person, is, I think, one of the most notable and interesting stories you can tell about her is that she was Hawaii's representative to the 50th anniversary of Queen Victoria's rule in 1887. And Queen Victoria at the time was probably the most powerful monarch, if not ruler, in the entire world because of the size of the British Empire. So Queen Kapiolani was accompanied by her sister-in-law, uh, Princess Liliuokalani, because interestingly, Kapiolani couldn't speak English very well, which is very unusual for the other royalty of that time period. They were all fluent in both English and Hawaiian. So the two women went first to the United States. They met with the president of the, t of the time, the president of the United States, had an official state reception at the White House. Then they continued on to England, and uh, Kapiolani turned a lot of heads because she had a gown commissioned for this event which was uh, adorned with peacock feathers and that was something that uh, made a big impression at home too that people remembered her for so not only was she royal and not only was she a sophisticated and um, cosmopolitan person but she also was fashionable mm -hmm. and uh, that may seem kind of superficial and silly but not something um, not really, because it's something that every Hawaiian at the time was proud of, mm -hmm. that their queen was mingling with other royalty internationally, and that she was sophisticated enough to be considered a peer among all of those people. So that's one of the things that Kapiolani is famous for. Now, that particular event, was that when we refer to Queen's Jubilee, yes, exactly. that's the event that they're talking about. Exactly, exactly. So this was Queen Victoria's Jubilee, not a Hawaiian queen, but the English queen or the British queen. And yet Hawaiians were present at that, and that's why there is a song commemorating both uh, Queen Kapiolani and Princess Liliuokalani as attending this event in England. Now, all the attire that they wore is very Victorian influenced. Oh, it sure is. And it came from that time period, That's correct? That's right. That's why it's called Victorian. Yeah. Because it's from the time of Queen Victoria. And I think it's important to, re to remember that the ali'i of that time were very sophisticated people in terms of being able to mingle, as I said, internationally. And they also dressed in fashionable Western style. Uh, of course, uh, Iolani Palace was a very modern structure. It had electricity, it had running water, it had a telephone, before the White House even had those things. So Hawaii was not a a little backwater that nobody knew about. It was actually, even in those days, in the 19th century, in the late 19th century, was already known as an important place, was already known in a lot of different places. And the people who ruled it, the ali'i, or the people that we are commemorating that you're talking about in your segments, are were important people internationally. Well, that was so fast, but there was so much information. Thank you very much, You're DeSoto. Very so very we'll be here throughout this month, as this month we're featuring uh, streets that highlight our ali'i. And who better to talk about than our experts here? So we'll be keeping you informed with the latest, so make sure you keep in tune every Thursday on Aloha Authentic. Reporting live here at Bishop Museum, back to you in the studio. Awesome. Thanks so much, Kamaka. Really neat. Mm -hmm.